coming back. Um, we have a lot of great people here tonight to tell you about more energy incentives. Buzz Thelman was here last time from Oregon Energy Green. Um, and Karen Chase is the local representative for Energy Trust. Okay. Um, and then Richard runs the existing building program, which he's going to tell you more about that and what that is for um, the Energy Trust. And then again, we have Todd Ingers from Pacific Power, who you have claimed at Lamb Lake County? And Mohawk. And Mohawk County. So, yeah. I guess the first thing we're going to start doing is Buzz is going to go first and kind of review some of the stuff that we went over last time, and then he's going to hand it over to these two. Um, and we'll have lots of time at the end to ask questions, talk, mingle, drink beer and wine. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. I want to thank everybody for, for you putting this thing together and uh, what you've done in the community and, and, and Pacific Power for hosting the food and also Energy Trust and, and Karen for doing that because it does make it festive. I, I'm very happy to be here and I was here before and it was to talk about no cost, low cost. And first of all, I, I am really actually happy to be here because on the way here, and you know, I live in Medford, so everyone goes through the construction. You know, that's that's part of the thing, you know, have to dial it in. And so my first call was over in Klamath Falls to the gospel mission because they want to put in solar. So I was meeting with them and I was running behind because of construction. And so oh, I can't believe I did it. So that, that cell phone's gonna be the death of me. So I thought I'm gonna call ahead and I'm gonna tell them that I'm gonna be about 10 minutes late. And this was exactly like that Allstate ad about, you know, where, uh, what does the guy say, that it happens, you know? It, and I pick up the cell phone, and I'm dialing it, and I drop it. Oh. And it goes right between the seat, and I'm going on 65, and I go, I am not going to let this stop me, I'm going to get it. So I go down there, and it's just like that stupid, and now I've got my hand in between the seat, and I can't get it out. Oh. I actually got in between the two, now I really have a problem. I'm driving one hand, and now the phone rings on top of it. I am sitting here going down there. So anyway, I am happy to be here because I realize how stupid <laughs> that, that is, you know. So chaos can happen. But uh, I am happy to be here today, and I want to give a little recap of what we did last time. And the first thing you do as far as energy is start with no cost, low cost. No cost, low cost. And whether it's a commercial building or residential building, you cut down an air infiltration. You know, like a typical house uses, loses three quarters of its air every hour just from ingress, egress, as far as opening windows. If you have a fireplace damper that just sucks it out, turn on the dryer, that's 100 cubic feet a minute. A generator range is 200 cubic feet a minute. So, and if you have a gap underneath, the, you, you tighten it up. And you do those things first. You're aware of temperature because every degree over 70 raises your middle about 3.1%. And that's whether you use natural gas, you use propane, or you use electricity. You do those things, and even like thermostat locations, and I pointed out the, the thermostat, this is the thermostat for this room, I don't know if you noticed it. I, I don't know why it's there. I mean, it is seven feet off the ground by one of the coldest places in the room. Do you have the answer for it? Um, it's the key. To keep people that go in and oh. that they see something and they want to touch it. That is and interesting. So they're trying to focus what's going on okay. here. What's there. So my alternative, no cost, low cost, to put a cage over it. Okay. Put a cage over it is what you do. But you don't want to mention temperature up there. You want it five feet off the ground. And the other one that I have to say is ductwork. 50% uh, of the buildings I look at, the ductwork has fallen off. And a lot of that is because the new ductwork is flex. It used to be, you know, metal, and it would leak, but boy, it was ironclad. But now the flex, they just put it on, and a lot of times they just duct tape it. And that isn't the way to do it. You either put it on with big fender washers and sheet metal screws, or a Panduit connector, which is a big zip tie, and you can't get it off. And one of the buildings I looked at here, and this was not today, was in Lakeview, a governmental building. They were going to put a new heat pump in because they couldn't keep it warm, and when I looked at it, the return air duct had fallen off. And they were pulling raw outside air in. I put it back on, put the sheet metal screws into it. They didn't need a new heat pump. They needed three sheet metal screws and some new duct tape. So anyway, always do the no cost, low cost first. 
And remember, conservation and efficiency always comes ahead of renewable. You don't have put in solar to support waste. You make your place as efficient as possible, you tighten it up, you go to LED lights, you do everything you can, and then you put the solar. You don't want to have expensive solar supporting waste. And then even simple things, now this is correctly. Now here's a quick pop-up question, ceiling fans. In the wintertime, do they blow up or do they blow down? And the answer is they blow up. And it doesn't sound right because you'd want to pull the heat off the ceiling, but you know, you just blow on your hand. The air's breath is 98.6, yet it feels cold. What you want to do is create that mushroom effect, that, that, that convection current. You want to pull it up here and get it all mixed up. That's what you want. And so little things like that can be very significant on the comfort and how much energy that you use in your home. So that goes before you spend a dime. So anyway, the next person I want to talk to is introduce is Karen. And one of the things we have here, a good partnership between Pacific Power and the Energy Trust. And you notice there's a public purpose charge on your bill, so you support these incentives. So Karen, we introduce you. Thank you. Thank you everybody for being here. I got to play out the and get her. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. So, Energy Trust of Oregon. I am the Southern Oregon Outreach Manager for the Energy Trust. I cover the territory from Lakeview here over to Coos Bay. And there is no more beautiful place on the planet. I feel so lucky to have that. Um, is this going to forward? Uh, there's a switch on the side. Oh, yeah. All right. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So a, a little um, slide here about the Energy Trust. We are an independent nonprofit, and we work with the customers of Pacific Power, Northwest Natural Gas, Portland General Electric, and Cascade. And uh, soon, uh, in the not too near uh, distant future, after the first of the year, we will also be working with the customers of Avista. We, uh, we focus on saving energy and investing in renewable energy resources, and we also serve Southwest Washington. This is our service territory currently, and all of the gold area here is Pacific Power Territory. As you can see, my section has had pretty much all Pacific Power Territory, except for a little area of Northwest Natural Gas. That will soon change again after the first of the year as we add a list of customers to our network. And Cascade Natural Gas, um, all of this blue hatched area in here and here. So what, why why do we care? And I'm going to focus primarily on energy efficiency. What's, what's the concern here? Well, by 2040, we expect global demand for energy to increase by 25%. That's just one estimate. You can look at other estimates and find it as high as 37% or 40%. So 25% might actually be a little conservative. And Oregon's population is expected to increase by five, up to 5.2 million people. And as we know, the population on Earth is perpetually increasing, and all of us need energy. And if you look over the course of time, what types of fuels we've been using, uh, and if, you know, here's wood, but before that, it was human power. So all of these things that we use for fuel is really just to offset human beings. And when you think about uh, human beings and then horsepower, where did that come from? That term originates from literally how much could a horse pull? So human power to horsepower to fueling with wood, to fueling with coal and hydropower, and then petroleum, natural gas, nuclear, and electric power. Uh, still on the increase. So as we, as, Butch, as, as Buzz has already pointed out, from Northwest Sea Tribal Planning Guide, energy con conservation takes the bulk of where we want to start. Then energy efficiency, and lastly renewables. So we build on conservation and efficiency to then top it off with renewables. Conservation is a little 
tricky. That's about us. That's about our human behavior. It's about how we curtail our utilization of energy. How, we be, how we're smarter about how we use energy and what we use. It's hard to change our behaviors. It's harder to change our behaviors sometimes. Energy efficiency relies on technology. And sometimes people use the phrase, we'll engineer our way out of these difficulties. But the triangle is actually very effective because it starts again with conservation. It's how we cut back and how we are smarter about how we use it. So since 2002, the inception of uh, the Energy Trust, uh, we have saved 492 average megawatts. We've generated through renewables 115 megawatts. We've saved uh, 39 million annual therms on the gas side. That is the equivalent of 470,000 homes, enough to, heat, to energize and power 470,000 homes to heat 70 more. $1.9 billion saved since 2002. I'm not sure that that is the inside. Almost not yeah, all of Okay. So the idea here with these uh, moving dots is that when these homes can serve and are more energy efficient, they, they, we can, we're able to serve more buildings, more homes. Right here in Lake County, uh, since 2002, we've had this kind of investment. Um, Countywide, Energy Trust has worked with 513 different locations. We've worked with 26 different contractors, professionals, retailers. These are people who are here in the community creating jobs, creating ongoing benefits for co the community. Um, the annual customer bill savings from this activity amounts to $186,000 every year. On the business side alone, the incentives into Lake County have totaled over $6 million. And uh, this, these, this data is um, available, I think. Uh, Sarah, Sarah, you have these sheets. Thank you. Okay. So I want to talk just for a moment about, again, where we're going in terms of consumption. How do we meet that consumption? And why is energy efficiency so important? The 7th Northwest Power Plan has identified going forward the, the amount of energy we will require here in the Northwest. And they have been able to estimate that the majority of that power can be met in this green zone through energy efficiency. That means if we do this correctly, we will not have to be building new power plants. And the cost for energy efficiency, because it does cost us to implement energy efficiency measures, is less than half of what it costs to create new power plants. So it's a good deal for us as consumers. As the, for, for those of us that are paying the bills, it is much more efficient cost-wise for us to pay for energy efficiency measures than it is to have to build new power plants. And if you imagine even building a new power plant today, is so complex. It, there's not only the time frame involved, but it's where do you put it? What fuels do you use? How do you bet in the, into the future on which fuels are going to be cost effective? And um, the Conservation Can Northwest Power and Conservation Council Chair Harry Lorenzen says, by investing in energy efficiency at the levels recommended in the plan, we'll be able to grow our economy without initiating an aggressive program to build new generating resources and repeat Northwest electricity rates low and maintain our quality of life. What we have done here with this Northwest Council and the 7th Northwest Power Plant is actually held up as a model around the country. Uh, if you go in other places in the country and you ask them about their power plants, they will say the Northwest is awesome. One of the guys that uh, started that and has been so aggressive in leading that tip to, um, at Mr. Ekman, he will be retiring this year, so it's kind of a big deal. 
So Energy Trust has programs for every sector of our economy and our way of life. If you are paying a power bill to Pacific Power and Northwest Natural Gas, Cascade Natural Gas or PGE, you can take advantage of this. Whether you're a resident with a home or apartment, renter or owner, uh, commercial buildings, industrial and agricultural buildings, or if you are interested in renewable generation, we can work with you. And I'll just give you some examples of what we've done. Here's Rouge Country Store. They did custom heating and cooling projects. They uh, did some lighting replacement uh, and uh, some case lighting. 22,000 in energy trust incentives, 153,000 kilowatts saved annually, with 23,000 annual estimates, as estimated savings. And he says, my energy bill was high, my cases were leaking cold air, my store was too dark. Energy Trust helped me put my own money back into my business and make it better. Medford Food Co-op, early design assistance in redoing the building, lighting and efficient refrigeration, 8,900 in incentives, $4,400 every year in savings of money not spent, as we were saying earlier, money not spent on energy and able to be spent on other things. Grand Central Bakery did a lighting project. New LEDs emit less heat than the old incandescent lights, so our facility stay cooler. We're saving more than $1,000 a year in solvent alone. Deschutes Brewery, passive cooling, energy efficient lighting, compressed air motor upgrades. $33,000 estimated annual energy savings by doing the upgrades, by investing in their own buildings and energy efficiency. Coos Bay Visitor Center is just there on Friday. We're thrilled to be saving energy and money as an example for the rest of the community. Energy efficiency features included lighting, a high efficiency condensing furnace and tanks, hot water heater, and demand control ventilation. <coughs> Apartment buildings have all sorts of other kinds of ways in which they can obtain incentives to upgrade their, their units and, and their common areas. Fire districts, fire halls, uh, some of which also uh, put on solar arrays after they've gone through their energy efficiency upgrades. It makes a lot of sense on public buildings if you can get the funding to do it. It's a little harder on the, on the public side to do that. These guys were able to make that happen. And when you got to know when a fire district can save $2,800 a year off of their power bill, that's $2,800 that can go to something else that's absolutely vital to the community. Uh, Hood River Middle School, they moved to net zero on their science and music building. We have a pathway to net zero now for commercial buildings that is awesome. It's exciting. It's moving us in that direction where when you look out into the future, the largest part of our buildings are going to be our plug loads, not the heating and cooling and operations and maintenance of the buildings. Hello, I heard about that. Yeah. Help yourself to some food and three six. Six o'clock. So I, I threw in some of these other slides just to give you an idea of the breadth of work that uh, Energy Trust can do. And last but not least, that's me. That's how to get a hold of me if you're interested. And uh, in, of course, Richard's next. And you can always talk to them as well, but uh, if you need uh, general information, feel free to uh, give me a call or shoot me an email. Thank you, Karen. Thanks for bringing the pointer to us really quickly. Yeah. Um, give me just a second. I've got to go into a different slideshow. My name's Richard Dickinson. Yeah. There's I a bunch of food still. Like Karen said, I work with the existing buildings program, and my territory is basically the same as Karen's. Um, there's a lot of different aspects when we talk about Energy Trust of Oregon. Um, there's a lot of different programs. I work for existing buildings. There's agriculture. There's, um, gosh, what is it there? There's new buildings. There's homes. There's, there's uh, efficient, there's, um, Manufacturing. There's all kinds of different programs. It just depends on what it is you're looking for. 
And there is that 3% public purpose charge on everyone's bill. I mean, you're all paying 3%, whether it's in your residence or your business. And if, if, if you're not aware that these incentives are available, then you need to be able to use the money. You need to be able to use the money. Um, how does your business use energy? I'm just going to kind of rip through the slides for us. Existing buildings. There's all different types of commercial building, um, businesses that are served. There's auto services, um, commercial buildings, data centers. You know, they all use energy. There's different kinds. Um, food service, grocery stores, healthcare, higher education, hospitality. You know, all the all the names that are out there. I would say that probably the highest user of energy in the commercial side would be your HVAC, your air conditioning. That's what uses the most energy in any building. Um, we'd follow that probably, depending on the site, by maybe refrigeration if you're a grocery store. They use a lot of energy for, um, for refrigeration. Um, and Karen also talked about the Rouge Country Store. That reduction of their energy bill was because they enclosed their cases. So their refrigeration load, it didn't take as much energy to run the refrigeration system. And um, there's just huge savings. That's like the largest chunk of their um, expenditure every year goes for refrigeration. So that's just money back in the bank. Um, eligible energy saving improvements. Lighting and lighting controls. That's big. You know, in a lot of these buildings I've been in, like I've been over here for the better part of the day. I took a tour of several different um, projects that I'm going to be involved with, and I see a lot of the key 12 lamps, and they're the big ones. Lamps are measured in eighths of an inch, so a key 12 is 12 eighths of an inch, so it's it's an inch and a half. A T8 is eight eighths of an inch, is one inch, and then the T5 is even smaller. And most in, in every situation I've looked at today, they have old magnetic ballasts in those big T12s. And they're just energy hogs. I mean, they really are. They generate a lot of heat. If you're going to go and change those lamps out, change the ballasts out, too. Um, we do have lighting incentives and controls for those lights. You know, you may have a, a sensor that senses when someone walks into the room and the lights come on. Or if you forget to turn the light switch off and you walk out, 15 minutes after you walk out, lights turn out. They save energy. So change those lamps out and um, save some energy. Put some control on. We have incentives for those. Generally, the simple payback on the lighting upgrade, if we're going to go from a T12 to a, um, an LED lamp, we're looking at three years or less. In a lot of instances, we see them at 2.3 years, depending on how many they are, there are and the hours of operation. Heating and cooling. You know, we have, you know, we don't have natural gas over here. And I see people are still using oil to heat with. Oil and propane are not regulated. You know, you, you can be charged a dollar today and five dollars tomorrow. It just depends on what they want to sell it to you. If we go to electricity, I think the person I was talking with earlier today, they said they're paying 16 cents a kilowatt hour. Okay, now we can do some calculations and figure out, well, this many BTUs, that many kilowatts, you know, and kind of compare that. But I do believe that you'd be money ahead if you could switch to electricity for your heating. Um, there's incentives for that. We have incentives for heat pumps, ductless heat pumps, um, all, kind of, all kinds of incentives. I've got books up here. I'm going to share those with you at the end or if you want them at any time. I'd be more than happy to get those for you. Uh, lodging, food service, grocery. Um, a lot of the older hotels, they have these old package terminal heat pumps. You know, just a little thing in the wall where you can go in there and turn it on and turn it off. Um, a lot of them are going to the ductless heat pump systems. They use a lot less energy. There's one compressor outside. 
And I do believe that one particular brand off that compressor, you can run four indoor units. And you can have controls on those too. That when someone leaves, or better yet, when you charge that key, that activation key, it tells that room that someone's going to be in there and it can go in and adjust that temperature. And they come in and turn the, the thermostat up to their comfort level. And then when they go and they turn their key in and the room's no longer occupied, it minimizes that heat down to a minimal set. So that saves energy. And the same thing with your home or your business. If you're, if you're going to go with a package terminal heat pump, it's going to save energy. I mean, they're great. If we compare an electric resistance heater, which has a coefficient of performance of one, that means if you put in one watt of power, you're going to get 3.143 uh, BTUs of energy out of that. It's just a one for one. That's how much heat you're going to get out of the watt. Okay? And we go with a coefficient performance of three with a heat pump. For every watt you put in, you're going to get three watts of you're going to get three watts of power, three, six, nine, um, almost 12 BTUs out for every single watt that you put in. That you put in because of the coefficient of so you're saving energy, you're getting more heat with less energy is basically what you're doing. Um, what else do we have here? Heat pumps, insulation. Uh, there are still incentives out there for insulation. Ceiling insulation, if we're going from no insulation, it's 60 cents a square foot, which just about pays for the insulation itself. Um, I worked at a public utility before I came to work for, actually for Buzz, and then um, had, to, had this position open with Energy Trust. And uh, we were looking at costs of like 90 cents a square foot to have insulation installed. So it, it's a very, very good thing. And the other thing too that we really need to look at is if we're going to look at energy, you know, conserving energy, Buzz is exactly right. We need to tighten up that envelope. We need to make sure that the energy isn't leaking out through the house. Insulation is a perfect way to do that. You know, light, light, um, lots of energy waste with that. And also the heat is generated from um, 60 cents a square foot in some instances. Data centers and IP. Those little rooms where there's lots of computers in there, it's so very energy intensive, they create a lot of heat. They need to have a certain temperature to operate correctly so that they don't get too hot or too cold as <coughs> well as the data transfer down. There's incentives for those. Ductless heat pumps, air conditioning, way to go, and there's incentives for those. Compressed air. Does anybody in here have a compressor? You do? With business? No. Okay. Well, there's a lot of ways to improve on compressors. Um, I recently did a project for a local Ford dealership over in Medford, and they had combined, they had 50 horsepower of reciprocating piston driven yeah. compressors. And they went to a 50 horsepower screw compressor with a variable frequency drive motor, so when they needed demand, um, it would ramp up and slowly increase, and they increased their captive air tank. We saw energy savings of 25% on, on by replacing that compressor. And they got a really fat incentive for that. I think it paid for 60% of the project cost. So they have a new piece of equipment. They got rid of four pieces of equipment that they had maintenance on. They're still going to have maintenance on the new one, but it's new. And it's going to last, you know, they can, you know, uh, depreciate that out 15 years on their taxes or whatever. You know, it was just a win-win for everybody. And the guys are happy, too. The employees are happy. Lighting. They say here that nearly 35% of electric use in commercial buildings is for lighting. I would agree with that statement. I would definitely agree. Um, there's a quick payback period. If we're going to switch from the T12s 
to the LEDs, and we're looking at three years or less in most instances, depending on hours of operation, how many there are, things like that. Um, that's a standard cash incentive for, that's a standard incentive. And we're going to get to the point where I'm going to differentiate between a standard incentive and a custom incentive. That's coming up here in just a second. Um, food service and restaurant. They have a very high use of energy per square foot. Eighty percent of the energy in a food service and a restaurant environment is wasted. It's heat. They use a lot of heat to, to cook food. They have huge air conditioners that they that they need to have an operation to remove that heat. It just gets vented outside. In some instances, they can take that waste heat and run it through an exchanger where that warm air that's being exhausted exchanges with the cool air that's being introduced to temper that so that they don't have to take the outside air and increase the temperature to 65 degrees, whatever it is that they're trying to introduce. They can capture that warm air. And here again, um, we provide specialized outreach professionals. You know, those are our, our network of trade allies that come in and they do the work. Um, they have a higher level of insurance. They've been through special trainings with Energy Trust. And it, they're very knowledgeable. It takes, takes a bit, quite a bit, to become a trade out on energy trust. And there again, you know, it's jobs in the local community. Oh, I was going to my phone, sorry. Um, we have incentives for high efficiency food service equipment. Um, a lot of restaurants go through fryers. I mean, they go through fryers every couple of years. Right now, we have an incentive for fryers. Uh, it's uh, $600 for the fryer, and we have an extra incentive on that of $900. It takes it up to $1,500 for a fryer. Guess what? New fryers cost about $1,600. So for $100, bucks, you get a new fryer. And that's going to end soon. If you have food service, please talk with me after this. Uh, HVAC equipment, lighting controls, electronically commutating motors. Um, in refrigeration cases, in grocery stores, they all have those little box fans, I think you see them in there. Well, the older ones have either shaded pole or uh, capacitor start motors. The new motors have a different winding. It's an uh, electronically commutated motor. They use, I think it's 25 or 30% less energy. And right now, the incentive, if we replace those, can be 80 or $100, depending on if the refrigeration case has doors or if it's just a reach-in type. That's more than enough to pay for the fan and have it installed. Um, also, high efficiency water heaters and insulation. We've talked about refrigeration and grocery. And there's lots of, lots of other little things too. If we're talking about grocery, since product, shelf life. Sends equipment life, improves temperature control. Like I mentioned, um, the store in Rouge. When they added those case doors, they saved their energy. They saved a certain amount of energy. And part of the energy that they, that they were able to capture is by closing those doors, that refrigeration, that cold air, isn't coming out into the store and creating an environment where they have to heat that area to keep the store warmer. So there's some added benefits of doing just some, some fairly simple upgrades. Well, another thing is anti-sweat controls. Hospitality, hotel and restaurant operators, um, they depend on a wide variety of energy intensive equipment. If you think about a hospitality situation, um, that water is always hot when you turn the faucet on. It's always hot. You don't have to really wait for it. Well, those boilers that they have, 
generally they're natural gas fire or electric propane or oil here, they have a huge reservoir that they need to maintain the, the temperature of that water and that's circulated throughout the uh, facility. If they're just using an electric resistance element for that, or a series of elements, um, and then they're pumping that around their, their hotel, if they were to switch to a modulating burner in a natural gas boiler for that, one that increases, um, instead of just being on all the time or on when, when you need it on, if it turns on incrementally, so it turns on to 25% or 50% or 75% or all the way on, can, over the demand of hot water that's needed, uh, you could save a percentage of energy rather than just having it on if the burner comes on a little bit at a time and just modulates up and down as it's needed. Um, saves quite a bit of energy. Um, we have incentives for ice machines and lots of other equipment. Data centers, hospitals, very energy intensive. Um, when we think about HVAC, when I when I hear about someone talking about air conditioning, the first thing that comes to my mind is cold. You know, we're going to condition the air, we're going to cool it. Well, really, when we condition the air, is all we're doing is we're changing the air. And that could be temperature. It could be the relative humidity. It could be the percentage of oxygen that's needed. You know, there's a lot of different ways that we can condition the air. And depending on what the requirements are for that space, um, there are incentives available to condition the air besides just adding temperature. Um, lighting. Come on. And to think, I put these slides together last night at 7.30. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. And here, here's, here's kind of the path that we like to see to energy savings. Um, the first thing we do is, is we're thinking about our energy use. What's our pattern of use? Have we looked at our bill? Have we looked at our meter to make sure that the meter that's on the bill is the electric meter that we're paying energy on? How many meters do we have on the site? Are they on the right rate schedule? Okay. Once we've kind of figured that out and we can look at how much energy we're using, we can kind of go around and add up and say, well, we've got a, a heater up here and that's a 4,000 watt heater and we've got five of them in here and you know, we've got a bunch of lights and they're 74 watt, 8 foot T T12s and we can add all that up and we know that you know we've got five computers on. If we don't know the plug mode, we can get a little meter, it's called a watt smart, plug it in, it will calculate, tell you how much energy you're using. We calculate all that up and we, and we look at our bill and compare it. Okay? Then we look at the big items. You know, how much energy is our HVAC system using? How much energy is our lighting using? You now look at those big items. And those big items, I guarantee you, Energy Trust has an incentive for you to improve your efficiency. And basically, by improving your efficiency, if we have a baseline, okay, this is how much energy we're using right now. And we're going to reduce the amount of energy by coming in with something that's more incentive and we're going to propose that, we incentivize the difference between the two. Energy trust position is we want to see you save energy. Okay? In fact, we want you to save energy to the point that we're going to pay you to do that. That's how important it is. That, that bottom row on that triangle you know, the conservation. We don't want to build another coal-fired plant. 
You know, I drove up the little canyon here earlier today, and there's a dam up there. What's that dam for? Are they, they going to put, you know, hydro generation on that or something? Flood control. Flood control. Flood control. Flood control. Flood control. Okay, okay, so there is a purpose. But there is 2,000 foot of uh, head pressure up there that <coughs> a series of mini generators coming down. It's been looked at. Okay, okay. Yep. Well, okay, I'm sure, sure it has. Uh, yes. Center Street out there? Yes. Has over over history in this town become a raging river uh, because there's a flume that goes down underground, but it gets all plugged up with greed when we have high water, when there's you know flood conditions, and it has nowhere to go, so it just it goes down Center Street. Yeah, it does. right down there. Right where Street. it went before, <laughs> before the flume. <laughs> Well, anyway, we don't want to build another dam. We really don't, you know? And if we can get to the point where we can look at our energy use and reduce that, that's what we want to do. You know, we work with Pacific Power. We work with Northwest Net. That always puts one time. Northwest Natural Gas, Pacific General, Pacific Power, Portland General Electric. And uh, Cascade Natural Gas, okay? And their position is they have to reduce. You know, they have to cut back on the amount of energy that they're using. You know, that's mandated. Um, so, how are they going to do that? Well, let's get back to the people with this. You know, let's empower the people. It's your decision. You know, how are you going to save energy? Do you really want to save energy? It's about saving energy, but it's also about not spending as much money. You know, Karen and I had a little talk earlier today, and she said, well, you know, people want to save money. Like, well, yeah, everybody wants to save money, but, you know, the way I kind of look at it is this way. If, if I can reduce my energy consumption by 10%, so let's say I'm paying $100 a month. If I get that down to $90 a month, well, first off, that's 10 bucks more if I went to go buy some shoes or something. But, <laughs> but that $10 a month, it's not saving, it's spending less. And, and if I can conserve that 10% and 10 people did that, that's enough energy to build another house. Right? If everybody saved 10%, we'd have enough energy to build another house. So as that load grows, as the population increases, you know, conservative figures say we need 25% more energy for the next what, 40, 50 years? Not to 2040. Yeah, you know, yes. we're going to need more energy. If we can meet those demands by being more efficient, well, it's not that we have to go put a sweater on because we're cold because we turn the thermostat down. We're kind of doing that, you know. We're the technological stage where we have equipment that is extremely efficient. Let's incentivize that. It may cost a little bit more than just the base model, you know, that code level. But in the long run, the savings are going to be dramatic, and it's going to have an impact, hopefully in my lifetime and yours too, but at least my kids and maybe someday my grandkids. You know? So that's that's kind of my little spiel on that. Thanks for putting up with that. A little bit. All right, now you can't, you, re you really can't read this, I know, it's a bad slide. I was actually going to bring this as a handout, but they have got enough back at work. Basically what this does is there's two tracks for incentives. There's your standard incentive, and give me a second here. savings, um, and basically 
This is the program right here. If you flip through this booklet and you see an incentive that you want, that you're qualified for, please call me, okay? Because I want to make sure that you get the right piece of equipment and that that is qualified before you go out and spend the money. Um, I've heard it said that there's a fellow that needed a particular piece of machinery. So he went out and he bought this piece of machinery that was very expensive, and he turned around to one of his friends and he said, hey, look, I, I bought this new piece of equipment. I can get an incentive. Well, that's not the case. In some instances, that piece of equipment has to, it has to be certified. You need to go through a process to make sure that, first off, the funding is going to be available for that particular incentive. And second, to make sure that it's efficiency. Okay? And he didn't. It didn't qualify because he'd gone ahead. Okay? Energy Trust wants to make sure that the decision that you're making about, about efficiency is based on that alone. It's based that I want to be efficient. It's not about having or wanting or needing something. If you have a, a heat pump, if, if you have a root pump unit and it breaks, it, it ceases to operate, we can't give you an incentive on that. We can't, okay? But if you know that, man, that unit's 15 years old, gosh, have a mechanic that has to get up there a couple times a year and it costs a couple thousand dollars, it's time to replace it. What if it's a, what if, what if we put a heat pump in and it's fairly new and it just don't work right? You know, some, some of these uh, contractors, I think, uh, will sell you something. Uh, if it just was yours, it probably doesn't qualify for that because it's not the right piece of equipment for the job. But I know one of those right now. And this brand new, it's probably, it's not two years old, it's a year and a half old. Uh, you know, does, does the job well in the summertime cool the cooling part of it, the heat part of it, you know, get it. And I, I just think it's not the right piece of equipment for the job, you know. Uh, like I said, the contractor comes in and says, well, this is what, this is what you need. Mm -hmm. Person's got X amount of dollars to spend and buy it. And he's gone. I mean, it's, it's installed and it's all nice and all that, and he's gone and it don't work right. Um, that, that's, a, that's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's also a homework or whatever it was, but it doesn't work right. Okay. It sounds. Buzz, do you want to? I, I could like to talk about that. Was this a house or a commercial building? Commercial. Well, commercial building. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things the Energy Trust does, and I have a heat pump in my house in my yeah. building. Is they have a tune-up thing. I was like two hundred dollars. And uh, by the way, for every ton of heat pump, you should have four hundred to four hundred fifty cfm per ton. Yeah. So three hundred three ton heat pump should have about twelve hundred cfm going through it. The duct is too small. It's never going to work. Yeah. It's, it's a ductless system. Outside, one on the wall, the out of the room. Uh huh. And like I said, the, the, the air conditioning. I, I run into those companies I used to work for. We had them in uh, control houses and stuff. And they seemed like they worked good until the temperature got down to right at the freezing mark and then they, they ice out and they just had a lot of trouble with it. But those were old ones. You know, listen here, uh, this is my daughter and it's in a, it's, in a, it's not two years old. And I don't know. And yeah, it's a ductless system. Yeah, it's just a on the wall. How many heads on it? Just one? Just one. And it serves how big a room? Probably not quite as big as this. How many tons is it, you know? She told me. Yeah. But like I said, when they, you know, I, I, I know I choose to do the business for some job. Yeah. And I feel like she can get her home on it, but you know, only as good as the information that the. Is they use an energy trust fund? Yeah, that, that's where I worry because the, the energy trust contractors, when they're all allied, and a rule of thumb, by the way, is every ton can do about 600 square feet. Yeah. About 600 square feet. So a two ton can do a 1200. And if you have a smaller one, it might just be undersized. Yeah. 
I mean, I hate to say that. Yeah, I'm afraid maybe that's what I have to But, like I said, I think it was a, and I can't tell you, I mean, I would have gotten if I was left. I think he was the right guy. And just, um, just to, that it can't happen, wasn't it? Let me give you my card, please. All right. I'll give it to you. Yeah. Would you or not have some questions about some other questions? Yeah. I'm kind of happy to listen to you guys who have some other questions. Thank you. Anyway, standard incentives in this book. Okay? If you see something in here, give me a call, please. My cards are up here. I'll make sure everybody gets one. Um, if it's something I don't have the answer for, I will find the answer for it. I will direct you where you need to go. Um, I have the applications. It's a pretty easy application. You fill out the application. You will need a W-9 from you to you know, see where the incentive is going to go. You get the work done. You give us an invoice. We compare the invoice to make sure that it's the correct piece of equipment, that the um, efficiency rating is correct. We submit that, come out, take a couple of pictures, make sure the serial numbers match up, and bam, your incentives in, in the mail. Generally, from the time you turn your invoice in, it could take two months. That's, that's about it. Okay, that's our standard incentive. Okay? If you have a project in mind that's not in the standard incentive book, it's a custom incentive. I do a lot of custom incentives. Um, and Generally, those projects are a lot more complex. We have some in-house tools where if we know we're going to go from electric resistance heat to a ductless heat pump in a building environment, you know, how many square, how many cubic feet there are, we can plug some numbers in, we can look at your weather data, we can look at your energy consumption and determine a baseline. And then our proposed system that's going to use less energy, and we incentivize that difference. And it's 25 cents per kilowatt hour saved, which, by the way, is about three times what you're paying for electricity. So we really want you guys to save energy. Okay? So that's the incentive. 25 cents per kilowatt hour saved, up to 60% of the project costs whichever is less. Okay, I have some examples of that in here, but that's, that's your custom project. It could be that if the, if the project is complex enough, um, we do this with a lot of hospitals and schools and, and institutions and things that way, shopping centers, where we actually build a scale model in a computer of the building, and we look at how much energy is used, we look at what it is we're going to change out. We're going to change out the heating system. And we're going to go from 10 ton rooftop units with economizers to a more efficient 10 ton rooftop with an economizer. And we, we can calculate through this model how much energy is going to be saved. Um, I recently did one. I'm kind of in the process of finishing it now for a particular school over in Atlanta Falls. Um, <coughs> We save over 470,000 kilowatt hours. They're going to get an incentive for $182,000 next month. Okay, so that's an example of modeling where we can say, this is our base. Here's our difference. We're going to incentivize it, the difference on that. And the calculation on that was based at 60% of the project cost. So it's a huge project. Huge project for that school. That's how we do custom. We do custom on everything. Um, running wide over at Plymouth Falls, we did a, a Zamboni. Everybody knows what a Zamboni is? Grab it on the ice, shake it out. We did calculate, one, one of our engineers did calculations to figure out what thickness of ice was best maintained in that environment for certain months out of the year. He looked at weather data, he looked at how much refrigerant it took to freeze a certain amount of ice, and it was determined that um, we needed ice this thick. Okay, well it just so happens that there's a company in Canada that makes a machine that has a laser leveler 
that will shave that ice to that predetermined thickness. So we were able to incentivize this Zamboni attachment to shave the ice to a certain thickness and keep it that thick. And it's really cool too because there's like a, a sending unit on the wall on a post and there's a receiver on the Zamboni and it knows how high it is to the base of the ice and as the Zamboni drives around it raises and lowers that blade grinds off a very thin amount of ice. And they also claim natural gas savings because of that too, because now the Zamboni just has to make one calculated pass and then pull back in. So you now they got double savings out of it. Very cool incentive. We got some money for it. I think it paid for 60% of the budget. Uh, anyway, we kind of went over the standard incentive brochure. We talked about some custom projects. Anything that's not in that standard book is, we can get an incentive for it one way or the other. Um, another thing, too, to point out all custom projects may be, must be pre qualified. Just because you have an idea that is going to save energy doesn't mean that it's really going to save energy. You know, there's a lot of far fetched ideas. You know, I have some preconceived notions myself. What energy savings was, but if it's not cost effective, it does, if it doesn't pass the, the cost effectiveness test, we're not going to do it. If a simple payback, no, keep going. Okay, but I want okay. To okay, okay. If it doesn't pass cost effectiveness, it's not going to work. Okay. If the simple payback is a year or less, it's not going to work. If the simple payback is in excess of 15 to 20 years, depending on the project and who it's for probably not going to get in the So there are some requirements. You know, we can't just go out and buy something, submit an invoice, and expect to get an invoice, or expect to get an incentive. There is a process. Most custom projects take about four to six months to come to fruition from start to complete. I have projects right now that are in my pipeline that I'm finding out about that will not finish till probably second quarter 2017. And, and that's fine with me, you know, it really is. I need to make sure that I'm getting out and doing outreach and talking to as many people about this program as I can. First off, it's, it's what I'm supposed to do. But secondly, I truly believe in what I'm doing because I don't want to see more energy. You know, I, I don't want to see another coal fire plant. I don't want to see more dams. You know, I want to see efficient design, intelligent, it's cutting edge that my grandpa would be proud of, stuff like that. So before you go, I just want you to, you said something and I want to really emphasize it because it's heartbreaking. It must be pre-qualified because I will tell you one of the biggest heartbreaks in my job is going into a project and then they find out about an incentive halfway through the project or after the fact and it, it doesn't qualify anymore. And they're doing the right things, but it doesn't qualify. So really utilize these guys. If you're thinking about something, utilize these guys. Get the facts up front and then go forward because it's just, it is really heartbreaking when you see someone doing that. And, and then. And, and you know, Richard, thank you for that time. I just want to echo, echo that because I see this throughout my territory. If you are thinking about doing any kind of an upgrade, whether it's a new refrigerator or a new building, if, you, if you're looking at remodeling, if your neighbor's thinking about remodeling or getting a new refrigerator or a new building, it just makes sense to talk to the Energy Trust first and just say, is there some way in which we could benefit by working with you? It's just a phone call or it's an online, that's it, just check it out. And another thing too, there are steps to take, okay? If, if you're thinking about a project, don't sign a purchase order. Don't go out and buy a piece of equipment. It's okay to think about it. It's okay to get a bid or a proposal, but do not move forward with that project until I come and I hand you an incentive offer. I've seen this before. We call it free ridership. 
It's where someone has a project in mind, so they give me their application, and we're in process, we've got all their energy data, we know what the proposal is, we're trying to determine the base, and about the time they get a little frustrated because it's taken two and a half months and they wanted it two weeks ago, but they go ahead and sign the purchase order. And then we come back with the incentive offer and we say, here you go, what do you think? And they go, well, I went ahead and moved ahead with the project. We can't incentivize that because then it looks to energy trust like, well, they were going to do the project anyway. It wasn't dependent upon the efficiency of the piece of equipment that they were looking at. So we need to be, and it's not that I'm trying to, you know, lead the witness or anything. I'm just trying to make sure that you folks understand the procedures that are involved. It's not a big headache. If it gets to be a headache and you're in the middle of the project, call me on the phone. That's my job. You know, I manage these projects. I want to make sure that the air conditioning that you folks get for the building, okay, is the right one. I want to make sure that our trade ally that's coming in on the side can give me the right facts and figures. That, that are going to be meaningful to the project. I want to make sure that if, if we have a, uh, an engineer come in to identify the, um, the savings for our scope of work, that he doesn't go off on a tangent and go, well, besides your HVAC, you need to change out your lighting. No, you've made the decision that you're going to look at your HVAC. So we do it project by project by project. So you know, it's, it's complex. There's a lot that we deal with with energy trust and civic power. But we, we're here to simplify. We really are. It's a win-win for everybody. It really is. So must be pre-qualified. Custom incentives. We're not pass eligible over here yet. Um, at some point, I heard rumors that you guys are going to get natural gas. And Who's going to provide it? Um, but if they're in with energy trust, three dollars a third. Cap is seventy-five percent of the project cost. Okay, a lot of these projects where we do have natural gas savings, there's electric too, so we can combine those two. So we have natural gas savings at three dollars a third. Oh, by the way, that increased twenty percent from last year. It was two fifty, now it's three dollars a third. Okay, and then our electric—that's been the same for quite a while. It's twenty-five cents a kilowatt hour. But a couple of years ago, that was capped at fifty percent, not sixty percent. So our incentives are increasing. You know, we want to see you folks spend your money wisely when you upgrade. Okay, so we can combine some in some instances. Oops, wrong one. Uh, we can combine the amount of natural gas that's saved with the amount of electricity that's saved. We can combine those two in an incentive. And we will pay that amount when it's dual fuel and it's capped at 75% of our debt costs. Because our gas sells. That's not me. But that's my information. That's just a generic slide somebody gave me. See, that guy has hair. <laughs> so better looking, too, is that my stuff. <laughs> but that's my stuff. Um, I'll, this will, this will, uh, similar slide will be up. But I wanted to run through a few success stories. Heritage Mall added rooftop units. Project cost $102,000. They got an incentive for $51,000. Some of these are older projects. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing 50% of the project cost. They saved 256,000 kilowatt hours, $18,000, almost $19,000. That's a year. A year. Albany School District, they replaced some boiler pumps. Project cost them $19,500. They got a $6,100 incentive. That was based on savings. So their savings, uh, $6,108, 25 cents a kilowatt hour is going to be about the $24,000. And they saved $1,700. Okay. 
Idlewild Lodge. They put in some attic insulation. It cost them several hundred dollars to insulate their attic. Their incentive was thousand twenty, so that's sixty cents a foot. Um, they saved that much energy, which equals fourteen hundred and fifty-seven dollars a year. I like this one. I really like to to reiterate this because this goes back to the the core thing about conserving. Okay, we're gonna have our vegetables before we have our dessert. We're gonna have our conservation vegetables before we have our renewable dessert. And this is a prime example because they added insulation. The project cost, this is what it cost them. And that's their incentive. So they were out of their pocket $300. And that's how much they're saving every year. This is a medical park. They did a DT, DDC retrofit. That's a digital control system for the building. Um, project cost $64,000. Incentive was $10,000. $0.25 cents a kilowatt hour. They saved 41, over 41,000 kilowatt hours. $3,000. We can get projects like this to where we save even 20,000 kilowatt hours. Um, and, and we compile all those together for a year. That's a lot of energy. You know, it's not, it's not sure, the big projects, you know, the, the 400,000 of the school over at Battle Falls, that's great. I'd love to see those. But I also like to see those 20,000 kilowatt hour projects come through. Because to me, that's the meat and potatoes. That's, that's the small business owner that's looking at being more efficient. You know, those create just as many meaningful jobs as that huge project. Ramada in and did package general heat pumps. Um, incentive for those is $150 a piece, so they replaced 10 of them. Another example of a pretty, pretty good payback, cost them $8,400, and they're saving $1,100 a year. Motel in Idlewild, Idlewild Lodge, Idlewild Lodge, Motel, I think this is the same one, sorry. Um, Southwest Oregon Community College, over the coast, had a $22,000 project, saved $11,000. 100,000 kilowatt hours, saving $8,000. Sterling Bank put in a rooftop economizer, cost them $6,300. Incentive was almost $2,000. Saved 7,700 kilowatt hours, $570. Klamath County School District. They did a PC power management. This is really good for large government buildings or large office spaces, school districts. Um, basically, the incentive is this. If you install an approved software in your computer system throughout the whole building that turns the computer off after a period of non-use, it just turns it off. It doesn't like restart it or anything that actually kills it dead. We'll give you $10 for every computer that you do that. Okay? The thought being um, is a lot of computers get left on overnight and they don't need to be. So if we can turn them off for half of the day, we're going to cut our energy for that device in half. Okay? We pay $10 a license. So for every computer, that you're going to have hooked up, you have to have a minimum of 20, we'll give you $10 for the license. And generally, that is enough, that incentive of $10 license is enough to pay for the license. And I think we're going to see that. Because our incentive 
was $16,550. That's how much energy they save every year. And that's their service. Just a simple little device. Who thought that up? Well, gosh, you know, it's just a software that we load on our computer, and after a half hour just sitting there, it turns off. And it saves that much energy. Anyway, I'm done. That's my information. Questions, answers, comments? Yes, sir. Well, I'm, <clears throat> I'm sitting here thinking about this, and I don't know this to be true, but I'm wondering if some of the, I mean, all of this makes perfect sense, and when you explain it, it's, you know, it's really exciting for business owners and homeowners. But I'm wondering if, I, I don't know what you do to help people go through the financial part of it. Because if there, you know, a lot of folks, especially small businesses, they're looking at making this investment and they can see that it's going to help them over time. But how am I going to get this? The upfront cost? Yeah, the upfront cost. Are banks being, uh, are they being helpful in this? mode or I, do you even know? Do you know? I, I would think that if it's a sound business that a financial institution would want to Investing loan money for right. that. But then there's other factors that banks look at, you know. I'm just curious as to what your experiences I, are I, are with working with that. You, most of most of the projects that I work with, the incentive amount Let's, let's go back to one of these examples here. Um, here, Sterling Bays. I know it's not a lot of money, but still, $6,300 sure. is a lot of money. Right. Okay? But their incentive is $2,000. Okay? So Sometimes the amount of that incentive is what it takes for them to make that decision. You know, we can all make decisions, you know. Right. That, do we act on that? I think, okay. especially like in your position as trying to help businesses right. do this, That's what I'm I think I'm thinking I'm, about ten different businesses right now that would just right dearly love to be involved in something like this. But and I think even the most powerful thing it is like the upfront cost, but the most powerful thing I personally think is the payback period for sure. what things are, and that if you're saving over a thousand dollars a year, right, eventually. That's going to be the money that's in your pocket, and it's not exactly. just going to be coming out of the money that you pay. Right. So taking this, something like this with you to the bank mm -hmm. and saying, "This is what I want to do to invest in my business, and this is what it's going to do for me." And, and, and the other thing too is if if your if your friend, our participant, I, I call everyone that in what you know that, that's involved with the program on my side, I call them participants because that's what you are, your participant. If you're a participant needs to have something like that happen, I would be more than happy to go to the bank and present exactly what I've said here. And I would think that most financial institutions would want to exactly. decide. And I'm just, I'm just wondering how much of that is a part of your program because I know yeah. it, it, it's, I, it's I know not what you're asking, Ginger, and I think that um, the, the question really is, is there a way in which Energy Trust works with lending institutions to make that $4,200 at the front end more palatable? So can they take the incentive and then work with, with a lending institution to get the, the, the debt financing to cover the $4,200? We don't have set up relationships in that regard. There's one example that I can think of, and it's in our multifamily program, and it was a, it's a project called Empower. Letter M power, and um, it was a, it's a kind of a um, specialized system. It was it was it's actually before me, so I don't know that much about it. But we worked through lending institutions to cover the financing for multifamily um, units for multifamily owners that wanted to go through the whole of, uh, energy efficiency right. renovation on, on their buildings. I don't think we have. Um, uh, established relationships with any particular lenders. However. Well, and I wasn't really necessarily thinking of that, but just being able to provide 
the participant with something that is yeah. tangible that the bank can trust. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, well, and here's the, here's the other piece of that. Yeah, and we looked at this uh, in another project that I worked on, which is replacing manufactured homes in a right. form of life, in that the energy savings is, uh, so you're paying your electrical bill, right. but you get this energy efficiency built into your project. Now you have that savings, right? That part that you're not spending, that that's the part that can go the to your debt finance. Exactly. Right. And exactly. it, just, it just sort of makes sense right. all because the Sometimes, you know, folks are kind of on the borderline and qualifying for something like yep. this. And that, being able to show that, that I'm going to save this much so I can give it to you until I get it paid. Yeah, can some banks do offer free. But can I ask you a, a sure. question on that? Do you think it's more that the business doesn't have the ability, has the, is it more that the business has the ability to get lending, but they just don't see the value in trying this? You know, or I, I don't think know. It's, well, because I, I would tell you, I my gut feeling is more that. Yes. Than, than, and I was going to use an example later uh, about that. But I was going to say that it's probably, to tell you the truth, it's probably about 50 50. But what I know about folks that have used this, and by the way, Roosh store was in my old neighborhood. <laughs> so I know more about it. <laughs> but um, I think that if if people are really committed to it, they're going to figure out a way. But what I was wondering is if that could be even more of an incentive for some of the folks that are on the, the fence, if they know that they can get that information from you. I'm not suggesting that you have to develop another program, right? If there's a way, do you know what I'm saying, that they can take that with them? If, if you know you're going to have them, monthly yeah. savings in your power bill that, yeah. can, that can help pay that, pay your, that debt. Right, 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 right. And then after your payback period, it's like free money, right? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but the thing is, is, we don't have a program like that. We yes. don't have yeah. an arrangement. Right. Can I say something? Please. Uh, the most important thing Richard said is call it. That right. is the most important. The second thing, go to Umpqua Bank, it's called Green Street Lending. Yeah. Right now, they, they, design, they design a program for conservation where they're looking at the savings can't retire the debt. Yeah. And that's what we're talking, that's I think what you alluded to. Okay. So I would go to Umpqua Bank, I know if others might have it, they have a program called Green Street Lending. And this fellow's been very patient. So four or five years ago, I interviewed every bank in, in, in Lake County. Concerning this, and I can't remember the results because I looked at if you purchased renewables or if it was conservation. I asked all those questions, yes. but there was none of the not to it that my short memory anymore tells me. Is what that answer. So, so I do have that piece of paper. Up. I got that piece of paper. All thumbs up, and that was just before Uncle came. Okay. But they were all they were there. The Pacific Press really had an interesting yeah. program. But they all said yes. So if you bring in, you have an energy audit, you bring in your audit with your estimated yes. savings that was done on That's my right. house, That's and right. then you take it into the bank. But I think it's the people don't know you can do that. I, I think that's the problem. I agree. That's I think that's the problem. True. I think, I think we have a huge education here. <laughs> so, so maybe then. And, and I don't, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think. I can do a sales pitch for Umpqua Bank with the position that I have. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, I, I can't really you know, say that, hey, if you need financing, go to Umpqua Bank. True, but I think we need some advertisement that these type of setups are not been, specific well, under me. Well, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, something. But just to, just to say to them, check with your, you know, check with your lender or with other lenders because we know it I, happens. I, the majority will do it. Yeah. 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 There are some financial institutions that are that are out there that would be more than happy to accommodate uh, you know you as a we customer. We won't get you in trouble. When we did some of our first analysis, it's a phone conversation. You mentioned exactly. oil, and oil hit four dollars a gallon, so your fuel oil was right there with it. Mm -hmm. The savings was unbelievable for conversion and yeah. energy, and all the banks recognize that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they definitely. They've seen it, but how do you present it? How do you educate the public to use it? And, and there again, you know, if, if you need me to be present when you go to your bank to explain this, mm -hmm. I'm right here for you. you know. 
That's my position. But when I had a, when you were getting ready to close, I, I did ask, I have a question for this and people will leave you, so I just, okay. when you're, I don't know when that is. I was just going to say, to take time, because I'm sure that you guys brought some other questions with you possibly that we didn't cover here, or more specific things, so just open up the floor to any questions you guys have. I mean, these four people in this room have combined more knowledge than about energy stuff than I could imagine ever having. So this is a great opportunity for you guys to ask anything that you have. Um, and we can do that as a group or afterwards. There's more food. Yeah. But if There's you guys food. have anything now. There's food and drink. And drinks. And I just I wanted to also just point out that um, we've been focusing on commercial, but I also wanted to tell you that I brought a couple of things for your residents. If you have not yet gotten your free energy savers kit, it's right here at the front cover. You'll the, they go online or call the phone number in the back and they'll pack it up exclusively for your home. You'll get free LED light bulbs and low flow shower heads and aerators and things, things like that. And then I also brought the residential Oregon cash incentive sheet. So if you're interested on, on your residential site, these are the two things you can pick up over here. And Karen, that is what she said, that's golden. That, that pack, they said, has got to be worth $130 now. I, the new one is all beautiful LEDs, that LED floods in and the shower head. Karen, it is a gift. And, you know, we're all commercial businesses here, but we all have houses, too. And uh, it's really, really a nice gift. I, uh, I signed up for it the night after your last presentation here. Uh, I got it within four days. Yeah. Um, wow. wow. The house that I, I rent, um, I had bought some CFL lights and it still had some incandescent, so I took out all the old incandescents. I put in LEDs in the lights I used the most, I swapped my CFLs yeah. to the ones that, that I don't. And granted, we've had different temperature changes, but the month before I had that, my power bill was over $90. Mm -hmm. My most recent bill was $60. Wow! Yeah, so, so some of that is heating, of course, sure. but because uh, of temperature changes. How did the light light? I'm curious, did the light uh, the light look? Yeah, no, the, 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 the line is totally fine. Yeah, Good. It, it works great. So. And the price was right. Mm -hmm. and in fact, <laughs> um, I, I then passed the link on to all of my coworkers who also signed up for it as well for their homes. Excellent. And that got me thinking about our office. I work for the local newspaper. Yeah. We're a six person team. And I've been there for about two years, and our office wiring was a disaster. I don't know who did it, but probably multiple people over years. So one of the recent weekends, I went in there, unplugged everything, looked at the room in terms of what can I rearrange, what can I, I do. With the purchase of two 12-plug power strips, I took five power strips offline. I found, we, we actually had at one point a power strip, like a power strip, like a power strip, like a power strip, 29 things running through one single socket. So through rearranging where things are located in the office and where things are plugged in, I took five power strips offline in the office. <laughs> Kind of sounds like an AA meeting, but uh, <laughs> but I think it's good. You know, part of this whole thing and why I applaud everyone being here is this energy consciousness, mm -hmm. and we've gone from the side uh, of just blissful naivety where you're dialing in, you know, and we've always said, you know, this whole program it starts from people unconscious, and then they become aware of it, and then they get an incentive. And then they become advocate patrons of it, and then they're dialed in. That's kind of the progression, mm -hmm. and you're there. Now so I have five you. power strips in a cardboard box. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> 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 does, that, does that power strip use power? You know what I'm saying? Well, I think he's saying it was the circuit was really low. Yeah, it was a, a matter of overloading certain yeah, sockets. Yeah, because we were running too many things through one. What I'm now able to do, just kind of replanning how everything is plugged into a room, is able to rearrange what goes into what, looking at what we have to have on 24 we have to have on 24 Yeah, so, so now, yeah, so the stuff that has to stay on stays on, the stuff that only needs to be under a business hour, I want to leave, I switch off the power strip, and we're, you know, not as a fan of power strip. So, I want to make sure we have to tell us the well, no, I mean, it's not, it's okay. I, quite honestly, what I was going to ask is, uh, for the locals here, um, and this might sound like a strange question, but where's the best place to get gas in town? Yeah. Mobile? Yeah. Okay. Shell goes to Fred Meyer. 
Okay. And what, you know how much they are cost wise? Um, we generally, on average, get cut and cents off when we do mobile. But do you know wow. where, where's the cheapest? Excluding of the, the cars, where's the cheapest place to get to? Wait, wait, wait. He's not going to get to it, but I think the West End is the cheapest. Oh. Oh. And, 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 and there's a point, there's going to be a point to this. Uh, where, uh, how much mile gallons do you get in your car? Uh, we actually got a good car a year ago. Okay. Because we are trying to get a Okay. So how, what do you get? 23? Okay. The, Ginger had an uh, initial question about you know top of mind it's amazing on how we really keep up on the gas prices and what our fuel economy is used and and, and, and the such a lot of times we'll we'll keep on top of mind of how much it costs of milk here versus Klamath Falls yes we do yeah and you know how how we do that and a lot of times the reason why we do that is because there's a dollar figure attached to it okay but just like your car and gas mileage, what, what these guys were teaching everyone today with kilowatt hours is your gas mileage for your car. Right. Now, and, and what's shocking is that so many people will invest a lot of money into their cars or they'll get another car because it gets better gas mileage, okay? They don't care about the payments so much or whatever, but, but they, you know, because they're traveling a lot, okay? And that's an asset that actually devalues. Mm -hmm. Our businesses and our homes tend to increase in value, but we all have a hesitation to invest into it to improve the gas mileage. That's all these guys were talking about today. Right. Well, when we class, first class, yeah. they were talking about light bulbs and, and, and things like this. And yeah. I have um, basically an online retail store, and I do a lot of I was having a hard time with the light bulb. You're right. So they recommend that the LED lights be 24 to 500 watts. Right, right. So we went to Walmart and we got the 500. Put it into my sewing area and it makes the biggest Right. Hey, and you're saving money? Still eventually going to be saving money and saving. Money. 